What's going on everybody? Brian Mann here, hands-on auto training, end of day, September 8th, 2021. Just a quick reminder, premium members, we have our membership meeting tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're giving away that DLC breakout box on Friday, the 10th of September. Guys, I had a, a really interesting one, the last job of the day here. We're gonna get to that, it was a 2007 Escalade with a P0011. Uh, it was a fun one for me, I enjoyed it. Uh, but anyways, that being said, today was a Ford day, big time Ford day. Today started out with a 2010 Ford Edge that had to burn up a coil, so the shop had to replace a PCM and a coil at the same time there. Guys, I have this complete procedure filmed, um, you know, with screenshot and also a little bit of other uh, camera work there and narrated. I'm gonna have to edit it just slightly and then I'm gonna put that on a membership site really soon for y'all, but that's a complete program from start to finish going up onto a membership site for you. Next, we went to a 2016 Ford Fusion Hybrid. Unfortunately, the shop had pushed the pistons in doing a brake job on the rear calipers without releasing the pistons or retracting them on a scan tool, and it's a mess. There's all kinds of things going on, and uh, I'm not sure what they're gonna do at this point, but basically, I'm to the point where I wanna pressure bleed it, but they don't have a pressure bleeder and neither do I, so I'm not able to help them out there. I really recommend that they go ahead and get that taken care of the right way. So, that was an interesting one. Next, after that, we went to a 2011, a 2011 Ford F550 uh, dump truck, and this had a replacement body control module being installed to it. I'll be the first one to tell you, I learned something here. I didn't realize this one had pats on it. Usually they don't, and I didn't see a security light. That's what was kind of interesting. I didn't realize it didn't have, uh, well, it didn't have a security light, but after I was done programming the BCM, I'm like, oh, this thing doesn't start. Uh, no crank, no nothing, and we had to do uh, basically a parameter reset and then put in the keys. I didn't realize that the keys were stored in there, so guys, you can always learn something new. I thought usually the heavier duty trucks usually didn't have the pads. So anyways, I learned. Next, we went on to a 2010 Ford uh, Fusion. This had a replacement ABS control unit. I learned something here too. Usually on the uh, ABS units for the Fords, I usually just ID the vehicle with a tear tag. That way it doesn't pull any information off the module that you're trying to program. So I did that. I left the key off, I ID'd it by tear tag, and I was not per did not have on the PMI menu ABS listed. I was kind of like, wait a minute, there's no, no ABS here. Uh, what am I gonna do? I tried finding some as-built data, finding a place to put it. It wouldn't let me do it whatsoever. So it turned out if I ID'd this thing with the key on, I was able to go right in there and go ahead and get this job done. Uh, ABS module was populated on the PMI menu, so it worked out just fine. So uh, that was an interesting one. And then we're on to the, I think the last job of the day. I'll see if this rewind this and see if I hit them all. I might be forgetting one. I did forget about one. This 2013 Ford Edge, we did a PCM update. It was an easy job. I think that's why I forgot about it. This was a 2007 Escalade with a P0011. Uh, the shop had put a, um, a timing chain, a camshaft actuator. They put the, uh, uh, you know, the vein thing, the actuator, and also the control solenoid. They put all these parts on there and still sets as P0011. The technician had stated to me that sometimes they can actually get this thing to uh, um, work when they first start it. And I got there and the engine was probably relatively cold. And uh, I went there and just went ahead and started this thing up and it, it actuated using the scan tool. I was able to actuate the uh, camshaft desired versus actual matched. When I turned off the engine and started back up to go do this, uh, it did not, lo it no longer worked. Uh, we had no uh, camshaft actuation, it was always at zero. So I was like, wait a minute, let's get the amp clamp on there. That's the quickest and easiest thing I can think to do. So we got the amp clamp onto this uh, uh, solenoid control wire. It was easy to get to because the harness was all torn apart. And I could see that every time I commanded this that we had uh, amperage flowing through that circuit. So I was pretty confident that was good. Also, if you look when I zoom in on this, you can see the uh, pintle bump or some sort of uh, indication that there is movement with this solenoid. So I was confident that we had the electrical side of this down. The next step was, do we have oil pressure? I found out that the shop had put an oil pump in it. Guys, we have to remember oil pumps make volume. They don't make pressure. Uh, rarely, I don't think I've ever personally seen an oil pump fail and cause a uh, low oil pressure situation. Usually the pump has more than enough of volume to put out. It's the bearing clearances with an engine that make the pressure, okay? It's that restriction that creates the pressure. So anyways, 
I looked at the oil pressure on the scan tool. I did not put a manual gauge on there. I know that's an inaccurate way to do this. Also, I did see the uh, PIP bulletin for uh, camshaft. It's very vague in GM service information, but I did see the preliminary information bulletin saying something about a camshaft and bearing number two. Anyhow, we had 11 PSI at idle. On a newer engine, that's not very good. Um, bringing up to 1,000 RPM, the specification is 24 PSI, and this was right at 23, 24 PSI. At 2,000 RPM, we had 40 PSI, and the specification uh, listed in all data is 38 PSI. So this oil pressure is kind of low, and we're using the uh, oil pressure centering unit, which isn't that accurate. This was actually reading two pounds of pressure key on engine off so without the engine totally off is reading two pounds so you can see what's going on there so I, i'm assuming that this didn't have enough pressure to unlock the uh, cam phaser now what we did is a temporary thing here is i dumped some 2050 in this thing we drained it popped some 2050 in there oil pressure shot up cam actuator worked all the time or the cam phaser worked every time so uh, this thing needs an engine, unfortunately. That's what it's looking like. Guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. I'm going to try to get some B-roll on here. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Um, so you guys have a great afternoon. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.